Well, welcome to my next video as we do an overview of John's Gospel in preparation for a sermon series that I am, God willing, starting in this Gospel in the next week. If you are new to this channel, I do encourage you to subscribe, uh, like this video, share it with others. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll get notifications when I post future videos as we go through this series in John's Gospel. Well, it has been an absolute joy and a privilege for me over the last few weeks to dig through this glorious gospel in preparation for the series. I am massively indebted to many who have done hard work in this gospel and specifically to Dick Lucas and his work with the Proclamation Trust and to Don Carson. And so much of what I'm going to show today as key themes and key ideas in the book is standing on the shoulders of, of greats like Don Carson and Dick Lucas who stand on the shoulders of others throughout the centuries who have dug into this glorious gospel. Well, very helpfully, right towards the end of John's gospel, he gives us a key verse to help us to know why he's written and what he hopes will be the result of writing this book. Where he says in chapter 20, verse 30, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. And as we go through this gospel, you'll see that these words, uh, signs and what they've seen and the appearing and what we'll see that is testified to and the witnesses to Jesus, all of this is evidence. And so one key word for John's gospel is evidence, which we'll see the whole way through. And that evidence is there, it's written, that you may believe. John hopes that those who read his gospel will believe the truth about Jesus, the Messiah, the, the promised one, the Son of God. So evidence that will lead to belief. And for those who believe, you may have life in his name. And these three, evidence, belief, and life, you'll see repeated over and over again in John's Gospel. And I'm going to show you some of those as you see uh, the orange, the blue, and the green showing some of the evidence and the belief and the life that John speaks about in this Gospel. Uh, we'll also, uh, a part of that evidence, John uses this word signs, uh, Jesus did many signs and John records a few of them as part of the evidence. Uh, we'll also see a few I am statements that Jesus made that are key in this book. And we'll also see Jesus' statements about finishing the work that God has given him to do. So the whole time remembering this these two verses, which are the key to John to help us understand, we're going to go through. I'm going to go through very quickly just to show you how John shows, firstly, the evidence, which I've highlighted throughout John's Gospel in orange. Uh, it's words like witness and what they've seen, what's been testified, what has been made known, and signs. And as we go through the whole of John's Gospel, we'll see a lot of this evidence that John is pointing to. You'll hear statements like this, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did in that key story in John 4 with the Samaritan woman. And jumping back very quickly uh, to chapter 2, where we're told Jesus what Jesus did here in Cana and Galilee, so this is the turning the water into wine, was the first sign through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed. So we see this evidence leading to belief. As we continue, we continue to see testimony about Jesus and what people saw and the signs that he did. Everything focused in orange is just showing the details of the evidence that John is presenting to us all about Jesus, who is the Messiah, 
the Son of God. Wonderful statement by the man who was healed. He had been blind from birth, we are told, at the beginning of chapter 9. And many of these signs in John are signs of creation. It's not a a restoration that's happening here. This man could never see. So this, his sight is created where he didn't have sight before that. And he says, I was blind, but now I see. You can almost imagine uh, John interviewing this man and he gave this evidence of what he knew about Jesus. Jesus speaks about doing many good works, part of the evidence. And then Jesus says in chapter 17, which is part of the big section from chapter 13 onwards, um, known as the Upper Room Discourse, and Jesus here is praying, and he says, I have revealed you. So he's praying to his Father in heaven, he's saying he came to reveal God uh, to, to his disciples, and saying everything that they have seen, was part of the evidence. And then we're told key um, eyewitness evidence that they were standing there. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, so he's the one who's writing this down, was standing there at the cross just before Jesus died. So he was an eyewitness to that most important event and then we're told that he saw and believed when he looked into the empty tomb so he was an eyewitness to the death of jesus he was an eyewitness to the empty tomb and then going into the rest of chapter 20 we see it says they saw the lord they were overjoyed because of it they said we've seen the lord thomas didn't believe them then when Thomas sees Jesus, he says, my Lord and my God, all of this is giving us evidence for what John saw and what those with him saw. And all of this evidence is so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So if you go again from the beginning of John's gospel right through, you'll see this idea of believing in Jesus it comes up over and over again. Um, his disciples believed in him they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken in this absolutely key verse in John that, that encapsulates the whole of the gospel for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son this son of God that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so believing is a, is a key idea throughout John's Gospel. And it's so helpful to go through a letter like this, a book like this, and just look for repetition like this. So again here, whoever believes, hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Belief is a very important part of this Gospel. And I do encourage you as you go and read the whole gospel. It's a wonderful exercise to do in one go. Just look out for these, for the evidence, for the belief and for the life that is mentioned throughout this, this incredible gospel. We are also told that still some didn't believe. This is one verse within the gospel that encapsulates um, much of what we're going to see and what John is all about. We've got one of these I am statements, which we'll look at more in a moment. Um, but he says, I am the resurrection and the life. That you may have life in his name. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? So that's 
Jesus at the tomb of his friend Lazarus speaking about the life, the eternal life that was available through him. Again, you just see so much throughout this gospel about believing in Jesus. From verse 13 onwards, there's a real transition um, in the gospel. Another thing, we're not going to dig into it, but you do, do see repetition of light, um, light and darkness. And this is the last time that light is mentioned in John's gospel. Uh, the shadow of the cross over, overshadows the story from this point. But at the moment, we still see uh, much about believing. Jesus now speaking to his disciples in the upper room. Um, they've seen all this evidence and Jesus is saying, believe, believe who I am. Wonderful thing we see here in chapter 17 from verse 20 onwards. He says, my prayer is not for them alone, speaking about his original disciples. I pray also for those who will believe through their message. Our Lord Jesus prayed for us who are believers in him now. What an incredible thought. And as we saw a moment ago, this evidence, John saw the empty tomb and he believed. But he still didn't fully understand. So uh, that's something that we, we see happens after the coming of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus had prayed for, that the Spirit would lead them into all truth. And so you see this idea of believing is, is so important. We've seen the evidence, we've seen the belief, and all of that is that you may have life in his name. And that idea is another key that we see throughout John's Gospel. We see it right up at the beginning. Chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So, life is another key theme, evidence, belief, and life, eternal life. And that's, again, why John 3.16 is so well loved, because it really does encapsulate so much of what this gospel is about. Whoever believes in Jesus... And the evidence about him, and not just the evidence about him, but in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Then John uh, records uh, with the Samaritan woman, and Jesus speaks about this living water. Again, eternal life. So evidence, belief, and life. The gospel is just dripping with, with these ideas. And again, it's evidence so that we will believe in Jesus. And if you believe in Jesus, you will have life in his name. So I encourage you again, don't just uh, follow along um, the video, but actually take the time, print out the passage and do, do the work, notice the repetition, uh, look out for uh, the evidence and the belief and the life that we do see throughout this gospel. I give them eternal life, our good shepherd. And then this wonderful verse again, which we looked at, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will have life. I am the way, what a verse, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's the only one who can give us life, true life, eternal life. So, believe in him. The evidence is clear that he is who he says he is. So believe in him. And Jesus again says here, yeah, for you granted him authority, talking about himself, of all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He is the one who gives eternal life. So again, you just see that repetition 
And those three, if you can hold on to those three keys throughout your journey through John's Gospel, the evidence, the belief, and the life, they are a wonderful tool that are going to help you to dig into this Gospel deeper. Uh, some other repetition that we see in John's Gospel um, is Jesus' I am statement. So in chapter 4, as he was speaking to the woman at the well, um, she speaks about this Messiah and he says, I am he. Uh, he is the one who can give this living water that she had been longing for. And we see here in chapter 6, where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread. And then we jump over to chapter 8, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am He. Again, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am God's Son. Such a key verse. I am the resurrection and the life. It's a big verse in John's Gospel. Worth just keeping, keeping tabs on as we make our way through. Another key verse, 14.6. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me just reinforcing this all of the evidence the signs point to Jesus so that people will believe in him because he is the way the truth and the life and that by believing you may have life in his name so just highlighting a few of the I am statements chapter 15 also really well known I am the true vine and it's a wonderful exercise just to go and even just dig into those I am statements in John's Gospel and another key that's worth looking out for is for the finished work of Jesus and so in chapter 4 Jesus said my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work and so as we go through John's Gospel, we see a repetition about that, that the Father has given works for Jesus to finish. And that theme then is picked up in the later part of, Jesus, of John's Gospel again. Where in chapter 17 he prays, I have brought you glory, and glory is another word you can chase through the gospel, it's also a big theme, but I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Jesus was on his way to the cross the next day, and there on the cross, those great words, as Jesus died, said, it is finished, it's done. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John wants us to see that all the evidence that we should believe in, that will give us life in Jesus' name, is all about the finished work of Jesus. His death, his resurrection, his ascension into glory, and his ongoing work through us as we proclaim the finished work of Christ all that he has done to save us. Well, that is a whirlwind tour through John's Gospel. Um, in your journey, in our journey through it, we don't want to lose sight of chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, giving us the reason why, why John wrote. Um, God willing, next week we'll be digging into the first 18 verses of chapter 1, uh, the opening of this Gospel, which sets the scene in just the most extraordinary way and I'm looking forward to digging into that alongside all of you. In our journey it, there's good reason that chapter 3 verse 16 is so well known because it does encapsulate so much of this gospel for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, this son of God, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what we want. We want to rejoice in this evidence that we've been given, that it might grow our trust, our belief in our Lord Jesus, that we may rejoice in the life that is ours because of him. And as you finish off John's Gospel, you get to the end of chapter 21, um, we see that Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. And it is a joy that we have many of those things written down in John's Gospel, but also in Matthew, Mark and Luke, and we can dig into those. But Jesus does continue to work uh, through his word as people believe the evidence and have life in his name. Uh, God continues to work. And just as a cross-reference, you might want to go and read John's first letter, just the opening verses where he says, That which we saw, which we touched, this we proclaim. So I really do pray that you will dig in further to this great gospel and that you will rejoice in the evidence that presented that it will grow your trust in Jesus. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, evidence, to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. John starts there and he ends there. In him was life and in him you may have life. So as we rejoice in this truth, uh, I pray that you will prayerfully dig through this gospel along with me. May it, it challenge us and change us that we might be a people who live having seen his glory, that we live lives for his glory. Well, God bless as you dig in further. Thank you.